Hey guys, how y'all doing today? My name is Franchise Fanatic, and welcome back to the channel. And today, if you guys, is another book of Boba Fett, new Star Wars show, uh, episode two or chapter two review. Uh, I do have a new background. I noticed this big punch and bag crap, but you know I'm gonna have to move that. Um, you know, what do you think? Do you think it's kind of cool? Is there too much Star Wars? I want to take a few things down and make a few more posters in here, but uh, I think it's kind of cool to see the Lego, see the Kylo Ren thing up there, which is pretty cool. The brick. Uh, Brick art, which is really cool. So yeah, tell me in the comments what you think about the uh, the background. I'm gonna make a few more changes, but you know I think you've been seeing the other one for too long, so I think we're gonna do this one from now on. But still, uh, I'm gonna add to it anyway. Book of Boba Fett again. Spoilers. If you haven't seen it, go check it out on Disney Plus. Um, this my one big problem with this episode is about the story and the you know conventions and the way it's you know put together. But uh, for the most part, this is a really effing good episode. This is way better than our, and I enjoyed the first one. You know, it's a bit slow, but I get it. You know, you're trying to kind of build up the character of Boba Fett, you know, with the Tusken Raiders and all that, him trying to move along after killing Bib Fortuna with Fennec Shan. So all that in, in, you know, in hindsight, I guess, we kind of start the episode in the present, right, where Boba and Fennec are just kind of trying to basically just say, hey, we're, you know, we're here, effing deal with it, suckers, you know, and all these other people in, on Tatooine and Mos, Mos Espa, they're like, this guy's a freaking joke. This guy's, you know, a complete loser, complete... Uh, you know, Bantha Poodoo, Moof Milker, and then these two huts come in, which, look, it, the huts are CGI, it's pretty obvious, look, a lot of the CGI in this show is very obvious, it is CGI, I'm not saying it's bad, but compared to, there are practical effects creature work in this episode, like the Athorian, so seeing the Athorian, you know, kind of blank or certain characters literally be practical effects to then seeing two completely CGI job or completely CGI huts, uh, it's not bad, but, you know, comparing that to Jabba in the original trilogy, you know, you can tell, but it's still, it's the best CGI help we've seen, especially compared to the, you know, A New Hope, so, you know, hats off to the CGI team over there. Um, so they kind of roll in, they're like, hey, you know, we're going to kill you, and uh, Bulba and Fennec are like, look, we killed Bib Fortuna, and, you know, Leia killed Jabba, so we're the next successors in line, because I killed Bib. And they're like, all right, well, we're going to have to kill you, and then, you know, they kind of have a little bit of a standoff, kind of western standoff, and then the huts just kind of poop off, and they leave. And then, of course, uh, you know, there's uh, Bulba gets back in his little back to tank and he's pfft, his little binky thing. And uh, the rest of the episode is literally just uh, basically a flashback of right after. So it's hard to explain. But basically, the, the beginning is the present. And then when he gets in the back to, and he kind of goes to sleep or has like the little vision or the, the memory of the past, that is when he escaped the Sarlacc pit and he's basically kind of. Pretty jacked up, you know what I mean? His face is all, he's like Deadpool, you know what I mean? He's got the white raggedy street disgusting clothes, you know, so he's not Boba Fett as we know him, so that's the past. And the whole episode is dealing with the Tusken Raiders and the train fight, and it's all awesome, you know what I mean? The, the, the Tusken Raiders are often billed as just murderous killers, uh, which they are, I mean, they kill Shmi and they, are, they do kill people, but, uh, you know, it's kind of cool, they're not really rectifying the Tuscans, but they're kind of making them more relatable in a sense that, yeah, okay, they have customs, they have people, they care for each other, and, you know, they are killers, but they kind of do it for certain reasons. They're not just, like, evil, you know. Some of them are, as we see in Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, but for the most part, you know, they, they kind of are a different uh, kind of species. Uh, they're not just straight-up killers, but we kind of go through this little training montage, and, you know, Bulba trains with them, and he gets the speeders. There's a really awesome and badass fight scene inside, like, a little cantina where he chucks a guy through a freaking glass window, and he, like, bounces around. The action scenes are pretty cool in this. I think they're more chaotic. Um, you know, more more kinetic, even with the camera. Like when when Boba throws a guy, and you know, one of the guys hits his head on a thing, the camera will go like, Psh! you know, what I mean. So it gives that kind of added weight and, and you know, momentum and intensity to the shots. It's not just, you know, it's like, you know, what I mean. So it really gives you kind of a a different sense of the the atmosphere they're going for with the show. And let me just say, the train fight is effing awesome, man. I mean, it's shot well. Uh, going back to the whole the way the action scenes are framed and shot with the kinetic energy and all that, it looks freaking awesome. Again, the train fight is a staple. And, you know, we've seen train fights and train sequences in the animated content, but we've never really seen it so much. I, I guess there was that one scene in Season 2 of Mandalorian, but, you know, for the most part, like an actual train train, but like a really... It, it reminded me of, like, 2013 The Lone Ranger, where The Lone Ranger and Tonto, or John and Tonto, were kind of, you know, trying to get Butch Cavendish, if you've seen that movie, and at the beginning of the train fight, it kind of has that same feeling. And, uh, you know, really at the end, they, they kind of uh, give like this weird lizard thing. And it goes up his freaking nose and he goes on a little, that's a bit strange. You know, it, it kind of was a little bit, you know, because th I was thinking, I'm like, oh, is this a dream? Is this a vision? No, he's actually effing like getting a branch and some kind of dam breaks and all the, the water. I don't know. But uh, he brings his branch back and he forges the weapon that he will use in the Mandalorian season two when he arrives 
uh, you know, with, with Din Djarin and all that to get Grogu. Um, and I think that's really interesting how you're kind of, you know, putting the pieces like a book. You're following the different chapters of Boba Fett to his life. Um, in terms of negatives, like I would say, the beginning with the whole hut thing, and I know they're setting up different episodes, you know, they're trying to do that, they're trying to kind of give you two versions, you know, a present story and a past story to kind of coincide with each other in the end, but the way it's handled per episode, it's a little bit sloppy, especially the beginning, because the beginning has you go, oh, okay, they're going to do something with the two huts, and, and then they're, nope, F off, they just go to Tatooine for the next freaking half hour, you know, it's it just, and I know why they're doing it, so don't, I'm not stupid, I know what they're doing, but... It's just, it's kind of sloppily handled in, in this episode where, you know, again, you're thinking, oh, we're going to watch uh, Boba Fett and Fennec Shan deal with these two Hut clan and try to defend their rank as ta on Tatooine. And then it goes straight, you know, left field out to, you know, point B of the past right towards, you know, the, when he gets out of the Sarlacc. And again, I'm not stupid for the 18th time. I know why they're doing it. But for the episode, it does kind of feel a little bit conjoined, a little bit more messy, a little bit more uh, convoluted as, you know, you're literally starting off like, with the huts, and then you go, you know, right over to that, and I'm watching it, and I'm like, all right, I care about the Tuscan plot, and I care about the train thing, and all this, I care about it, but what happened to the hut thing, you know what I mean, and I know they're going to revisit it probably in chapter three, but it just kind of feels a little bit strange, maybe I'm, maybe I'm weird, I don't know, I just felt it was kind of poorly handled, that aspect, but everything else is great, CGI, action scenes, plot, you know, writing, acting, it's all great. Seeing young Boba that looked just like freaking Daniel Logan, who's also in Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, going to be voicing Boba Fett, um, which doesn't sound great, but whatever. It does kind of, I'm looking at it, I'm like, holy crap, like that looks like young Daniel, you know what I mean? I don't know if it was like extra footage that George, you know, shot, uh, but they got it, I don't know, but it still looked pretty damn good. So again, I'm going to give the Mandalorian, Mandalorian, uh, Book of Boba Fett Chapter 2 from a 0 to a 10, I'm going to give it a 9. Um, the, the whole, co you know, convoluted plot thing in the beginning, uh, again, I know what they're doing, they're setting it up, and it's not that bad, but it did kind of take me out when the you know, very beginning is that, and then the whole, you know, 30 plus minutes, the rest of it is just about the Tuscans and the train. It is a little bit, uh, strange, but still, I enjoyed it, it was really fun, better than the first one. Again, you know, the first one, they're trying to kind of set things up, and this one was more or less, you know, now we get to the action stuff, but still, very cool. This is a really good show so far, and I can't wait to see how the remaining, I believe, five, I think there's seven, so we have... Uh, five left, but still I cannot wait. I love all of Star Wars. It's all good. Again, tell me in the comments what you think about this episode and the background. I'm going to be adding a few more things. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And again, like the video if you did. Subscribe if you're new for more Book of Boba Fett and Star Wars related content. And I can't wait for the future of Star Wars. Thank you guys, and we'll see you in the next video.